Welcome everybody to another evening of Quick Fix Golf Online here, showing you a little something about golf, and you might even have a couple of laughs as we go along. What do you say there, Jim Mason? Good evening, Mr. Lopez. How are you this evening? Que pasa? Nada. And tonight, well, we're... Go ahead, I'm we sorry. We're going to do it in Spanish tonight? No. The heck with it. Let them all go jump back over the fence. <laughs> <laughs> We'll send them over there with Tony's Marais or whatever they're called. <laughs> ah, are you kidding me? So <laughs> anyway, the um, the Virginia Tech Hokie Johnson Wagner, great guy, didn't quite take it all the way to the house, but we still thought we should. Uh, you know, we have so many Tech fans that are students, right? And he seems like a great guy, nice family, everything. Uh, there's a lot more to golf than just uh, winning golf tournaments. He's a good uh, ambassador for Virginia Tech Hokies. Everybody I've met from the Hokies have always been pretty good people. Oh, yeah. It's a great school. Yeah. A whole lot better than where I used to hang out at my University of Miami. <laughs> a bunch of criminals over there. <laughs> what a difference, man. My own. But for any of you that are here for the first night uh, tonight, Quick Fix Golf, we are a, a golfer's club per se, and Jim Mason on the line there is the director of golf and the head boss and everything at Pendleton Golf Club, and uh, I clean the windows and stuff like that. <laughs> Slow down my computer. Slow down your computer. And, of course, you'd like to know what Jim looks like. There he is right there. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> it's only fair being that you can't, you can't wow, really see us on a webinar. You geez, should know who you're dealing smile. with. Yeah, that's when we were having a beer after the game there. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> you look pretty good there, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I start calling you fish mouth. <laughs> it's like a largemouth bass. I was going to say, you got a hook coming out of there or something. I'm telling you. And, of course, there I am, Bobby Lopez, with uh, a bag of ice on my head because I just got whacked by my wife. What happened was I told her I was going to a football game. And I didn't realize it was televised, and she saw the game. There it is right there. <laughs> Whoa. I came home and she said, how was the game? I said, oh, it was great. Yeah, good game. Pow. <laughs> Unbelievable. That looked like the football I used to play. I tell you what, they should have saved a lot of money on the uniforms. <laughs> Unbelievable. Is that, so anyway, two, I'm sorry, go is ahead. Two-hand touch or is that full tackle? <laughs> two-hand touch. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get one hand on it, I would consider that a pretty big accomplishment. I'll tell you that right now. Anyway, um, yes, you can improve your game at home in your pajamas. <laughs> they play football in their pajamas. <laughs> By way of the um, the technology that we have, we're going to invite you tonight that any of you haven't done it, to just take your swing, use your iPhone or your camera or whatever you got, Videotape yourself hitting a golf ball and load it up to us by way of an email. Just send it to quickfix at, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, oh, quickservice at quickfixgolf.com. That's it. Or Bobby Lopez at quickfixgolf.com or Jim Mason at I don't like your swing dot com. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you send me. <laughs> and of course, the, the chromes are gone, but we still have some of the hex blacks running 1999. Jump all over them because those are disappearing also. And uh, members get it at $19.99. Anybody who's listening to the webinar is not a member gets them at $19.99. That's the real golf ball. It only says practice on the side, but it's not a range ball. It is the real ball, the real same McCoy they use on tour. And that's what it's for, really, is to use on the driving range at a tour event for tour players. So um, that's a heck a of a great, deal right there. Yeah, it's a great ball. Right. So they're 46 bucks a dozen, only $19.99. Now, Jim has some stuff before we get started on Jason Wagner about uh, lesson takers. This is some information. Tell them all about it, Jim. Tell them what you got. Well, you know, every month we get a PGA magazine from the PGA, and they do a lot of surveys. They're trying to improve the game of golf and try and get more people into the game. And they're just surveying golfers to see, you know, how many people do take lessons and the breakdown of the type of lessons they take and, and to help PGA professionals, you know, to – to grow the game and get more people involved taking lessons. And I thought it was interesting to see the breakdowns of how many people do actually take lessons. And, you and know what it didn't tell us, though? It doesn't tell us the percentage of the number of golfers that take lessons. Here it says the percentage men are 51%, women 49 
But out of 100% of golfers, how many of them are taking lessons? Right. Well, I think it's right around, of the people they surveyed, it was right around 50%. Really? That's yeah. really high. That's really high. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm not surprised. Coming from downtown. All right, lesson type. It looks like 82% of golfers do private lessons. Right. 7% were group lessons, or 8%, 7.5% clinic, and going to a golf school was just 3.5%. That surprised me. Yeah. And, and really, group and clinic lessons are a great way for, for knowing to stay, someone that hasn't taken a lesson to get involved in golf. Because it takes a lot of the pressure off, I think. A lot of people are intimidated by taking lessons. But a group environment, I think, is a great way to get started. Especially if the group looks like that football game. <laughs> I'd be intimidated trying to hold my stomach in. <laughs> I'm able to breathe. Huh? Hey, Lopez, you got a short back stretch. Yeah, I can hardly breathe. Let me see here. Hold on. <laughs> Where were the lessons taken? So it was, you know, this thing would show it when I've made it, and now that it's in this format or on the webinar, it doesn't. But public course was what, 50? No, it was, uh, what the heck was it? What was the percentage? You got that in front of him? I don't. I should have, I should have, I don't have it with me. I had it. It was included. When I made the thing, I would just wave, you know, take the, the, the thing and sort of wave over it. Here you can't do that. Yeah, I think, I think the private, the public was the highest, like 50 no, it can't be 50 because it ain't half of it, but it was around, I think it was 35, 22, or these two were, you know, they're pretty close. And so most of them were public course, some private course. And funny enough, the lesser number of the three is the driving range. I'm surprised. Right. Because I thought people go to the driving range because they want to get better. Well, like, you know, I don't know if a lot of golf courses have qualified teaching professionals like they do well, you at Patterson, you know. I remember, yeah, I'm qualified. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the private course was 38%. I remember that number. There was 38, 44 public, something like that, and then 25, 24 for the uh, driving range. Yeah, maybe they get the impression whoever's at a driving range is a tin cup or something, some kind of a loser or something. I don't know. Right. That surprises me. I would have thought more people would be going to a a driving range. But, you know, who knows? And who knows how they took these numbers. Let's look at the reasons why. Most of them said too expensive. Yeah, that was by far number one. Then there was lack of time and no desire. Hmm. I stink and I don't care. I'm going to keep playing that way. Other reasons, they were satisfied with their game. Look at that, almost half of them. And the other ones preferred another source. They'd rather listen to their pal. Or maybe they're thinking that they're looking at a golf magazine or... Right, go watch the golf channel or, you know, they just listen to their buddies. They think their buddies know what they're doing wrong. And like what you said, it was, it, it was intimidating to them to walk yeah, into I... that pro shop and say, hey, Jim, I want to get a lesson. Well, in your case, you know, you know, they know you're a former tour player. I think a lot of people get intimidated by that. Really? Especially my wife's not. <laughs> <laughs> I found that a lot of ladies can be intimidated, too, taking golf lessons. Well, I mean, we try to make it as, as friendly as possible. Uh, the group, the, you know, the workshop lesson things that we have seem to draw more women than the private lesson, I guess because they figure they're not singled out. Um, and they seem to be having a great time. So, I mean, we try to make it fun. But, of course, they didn't ask our people. They just asked people in general. So we don't know how other people run their group programs and stuff. Right. You know, so. But it's, it's interesting information. Maybe we can ask the gang after we get done here uh, some questions when we open the doors. And here's the Hokey theme song. Can you hear it? No. You can't. Welcome to Go to Webinar. Web events made easy. There you go. I'm here a little bit now. Well, now this stupid thing has. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Okay. Can hear good. The music very well. Couldn't hear very well. Too bad. 
That's yeah. the hokey theme song. And here's Jason. Look at that mustache. <laughs> I like that. He's my kind of guy. Yeah. <laughs> you need to join Quick Fix Golf. We'll talk to you about that a little bit later on. Right now, whoops. That's why I went the wrong way. Hold on. Now I know. I needed to go to uh, switch programs, and we want to go to PGATour.com, and there he is. There's Jason Wagger, and here were his rounds for the tournament. He finished 11 under, which is nothing to sneeze at. Sure, he could have won it, but hey, you know, um, stuff happens. Here's round one. He shoots 62. Ooh. Look at his birdies. Three, four, five, seven, nine. On the front, he shoots 29. Oh, wow. And he was no slouch on the back. He shot 33. He had an eagle and a birdie. All right, so he shoots 62. But then he comes back and, and shoots even, 34-36. Then he comes back and shoots 64 again. That's why he was leading the tournament by a couple of shots. But this time he spread all the birdies out, you know, 1, 3, 5, 9, 10, 12, 18. Wow, but then, dun dun dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> he makes more bogeys on the last day four than he did the whole tournament. The whole tournament only had two bogeys. He's got four of them on the last day. What a shame! You rarely see the sixty twos and sixty ones on the final day. Well, you know when uh, you start taking the gas, um, as Vince Allen used to say, you took the gas. But uh, that's a shame. 39 on the back. Whoa. What the heck happened? I don't know. Let's look down here at some of his stats. And we're going to look at his swing in a moment. I've downloaded some swings of his. And uh, I've got one thing that I, I, I could bring to your attention. It might be a little interesting here. But uh, first round, six birdies. You see third round, seven birdies. No birdies on the other two rounds. Um. Pars, bogeys, a lot of bogeys on the last round we know. But look at this, driving accuracy, 78% on round one, 64 on round two, 85% on round three. So could we argue that hitting the ball in the fairway has a lot to do with how many birdies you make? I would say so, probably yes. Although round two, he only hit it 64%. Well, he made one birdie all day. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's got to be an argument. Driving distance, it didn't that he hit it that far, round one, 287. He hit it further on round three, but he had a good score then, too. I don't know that we can, you know, but here he's tied for 22nd as far as driving accuracy. Um, longest drive, holy cow, he can knock the snot out of it. 326, that was in round two that he didn't do well. And then greens and regulation, hello, 88, 83, 72, 77. Strokes gained putting, there's the big number, 3.7, 3.6, a minus and a minus in the other two rounds. I mean, it keeps coming back to that, Jim, all the time. You look at the putting stats, and that's when they score. Yep. you got to roll the ball in a stinking hole. I mean, look at this, 1.9 there, 2.0 there, 1.5, 1, 1.4 1, on the two rounds that he was hot. I mean, you made the putts on those days. He didn't on the other days. What do you think? Yep, well, that's what it always comes down to, especially on the tours, who's making the putts. They can all hit the ball. Well, let's take a look at his swing. Let's see what his swing looks like. Here we go you know off to uh, you know what a good stat would be? Would be the average distance from the hole. Yeah, Not he just is. hitting the green. But well, he's hitting it over 300 hit. yards. He can't be but so far away. <laughs> no, but I mean, when he hits the green, what's the average distance he is away from the hole? Oh, we can figure that out. Let's take a look at, here's his swing on the downline view. This is Jason Wagger, Virginia Tech Hokie. Good guy. Oh, look at this. Man, I'm telling everybody all the time. Come on, hinge the hands. Look at him. 
does that beautifully. Got it sort of low, brings it in low. Look at this, look at this, but he doesn't go under the plane. Here he is right in the kisser. Not much turn in the hips, huh? No. But look at his hands rotate over right here. See? Always tell you, you got to rotate those hands over, Perkins. Are you watching this? <laughs> I know he's, he's on the, And then I'm always riding his tail about, see? Because he starts with his chest, talking about Dennis, and gets over the top. But here, look at that. Look at the roll of those. Maron. He throws it over. Look where his face is facing. The, the club face is facing. Look yep. at that. He throws it over. Now let's look at him from the front and watch this. This made me very happy when I saw this. See, now you look at this. He's got, he's, you know, he's got he, no big deal. Don't worry about oh. that. Was that you? <laughs> you look like John Daly. I know. But watch his shoulder, or I should draw the line here. Here's the line of scrimmage. Watch his left shoulder. Bang. Stay right on that line of scrimmage. He doesn't move his shoulders laterally. Watch it again. Let me get these lines out of the way. It goes up. See? To where he has the tip of the left shoulder to the ball at impact. Where's the lateral movement everybody talks about? Now watch. He goes here. Here's this shoulder. There's that shoulder. Now watch. They're going to change places. Almost. Well, it doesn't really on him. Not totally. But his right shoulder is where his left shoulder was. And his left shoulder doesn't go past the line of scrimmage. See? That's why he gets such a nice lag on the club right there. Because his chest is still sort of facing this way. And his left shoulder is high and his right shoulder is well behind him. I don't like what his hips do. You see what his hips do right there? They sort of lock up. And they wait for him to go on by, and then he continues. Now, here's what I found it could be his problem. Padna, padna. Watch this. Watch this. The Cubans on the warpath. Now, hold on. We don't know. Okay, wait a minute. Maybe I'm screwed up with the camera, guy holding the camera. But wait a minute. No. Look, see that, see that red line? It's right on that pole the whole time, right? So he mm -hmm. goes up. I was right. See how he goes up and then watch. Look at just the slight bit of breakdown here. That would concern me. Okay? That would concern me. Now, he didn't move a lot on the backswing like I thought because right there is where the camera was in the first place. Somebody's holding the camera in their hand. But look, it's staying perfectly steady right there. The red line's taking purpose. That he's coming right up and out of it. Way too early for my liking on that shirt. Especially I'd on rather short. Start. Excuse well, especially me? On a short shot like that. Yes. He should keep the back of that left hand going. He needs to get needs to get the back. Can you call him? <laughs> yeah, let me get him on the phone. On <laughs> call him right now, will you? Hey, hey Jensen. Maybe he's, on the, maybe he's on the webinar. Who knows? <laughs> what would that, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's try and send it to him. Why okay. not? Yeah, we know a ton of Hokies around here. Somebody's going to know them. Yeah. We're going to send it to them. We're, gonna, look, just, we're not criticizing there, Johnson, old buddy, old pal. We're not criticizing you. We're just we're trying to help you. We like the Hokies. Here we go. Now watch. Comes up. See? And right out of it. And a little bit of, see, kick right there. And it's going to make that ball. Look, look, look at how high. Look at the launch angle on that puppy. Now, if, if that was his intention, then he should open the face more and rotate the chest a little more, but stayed level. You can't be going up and down when you're hitting these shots. You think or what? What do you think? Oh, no. Definitely not. Okay, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at something here. Hold on. Let me see. Don't know that I have, and I should have dug up somebody else hitting a shot like that. But wait a minute. I might just have... There you go. Now here's now here's a bunker shot. This is Ben Crane, looks like. 
And yeah, it's a bunker shot, but it's very similar in nature, see? Then he comes up. Stays down there longer than... He at least stays there through the ball and then comes up. Let me right. see if... Let's look at this character. I have no idea who this is. Yeah, we can't go by that because whoever was holding the camera was moving it around. But just to right. give you an idea, when we look over here at Tiger and you see how careful he is to stay very, very quiet when he putts right there. See that? Oh, don't take a peek, Tiger. Stay there. <laughs> you can't stand it, man. You want to take a look? Stay there. Stay there. The old pro taught me how to play used to make me close my left eye. Say, so close your left eye so you couldn't look if you wanted to. Okay. Of course, he's practicing, so he can look a little. But he stays very steady. I don't see Wagner staying real steady on that. You know, look, I could be full of malarkey, but... See, look look at his chest. See it coming out with the shot? Yep. I don't know. Now, let's go back to the stats, like you said. Boy, I do you hang think around he you. Was, do you think he's trying to hit a lob shot there? Even if he is, I still wouldn't lift up and out of the shot. Let's let's look at performance stats here. Okay. He's a big guy. Six Jeez. foot three. Yeah, he ain't fooling around. He's uh, living in Charlotte. What's he doing living in Charlotte? Move back to Virginia. What's the matter with you? All right. 230 pounds. He could play quarterback. All right. Let's see. Driving. To, that's why he hits it so probably far. He's a strong kid. 277. He's ranked 159th. So he was hitting it longer than he normally hits it. Of course, you're up there in, uh, in, in that little bit of altitude there. Yeah, West Virginia. It's up a little bit in the hills. You know, it's not really the mountains. You should know that. I'm surprised they played with shoes on. Let me see here. <laughs> Easy now. Don't make me start with the road. <laughs> driving, driving accuracy, 58%. So he was hitting it in the fairway more than he normally does. He's 95th in greens and regulation. Now let's see some sand saves. He's 143rd. You know, I wouldn't mess with his golf swing. Quite frankly, I would leave it alone. Even even that angle that he has at the top, where he is is his wrist sort of gets him a hold. I'd leave it alone. I wouldn't mess with it. I think what he needs what he needs to concentrate on a little bit is, you know, around these greens. Look at this par breakers. I don't know what that means. Sixteen point twenty two percent. He's one hundred seventy first. All around ranking one seventy eight. How could that be? Let me see. Birdie stats. Is he scoring average? Uh, total Eagles career. What is this? Scrambling. 111th. There you go. Yep. 111th. But he's made seven million bucks at 174th ranking. A seven million dollars. Mm. You think you can afford thirty nine dollars for a private lesson with the Cuban? <laughs> 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 We're in the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see here. Par 5 performance, 170th. So that doesn't make sense as far as he hits it. Right tendency. Average going forward shot distance in yards, 164th. Approach from 200 yards. Let's see, 38. Look, from 75 to 100, he's ranked 142nd. Yep. See, approaches. Look at this. From, oh, wait a minute. I'm wrong. 75 to 100 yards, 144th. 100 to 125, 159th. I'll guarantee you, if we had a shot from him from 100 yards, you'd see a little bit of movement in the upper body. Just like we saw with that chip shot. And that's why he's having trouble there. You got to stay real quiet on those shots. Look at this. Putting from 10 to 15 feet, 173rd. Hello. Now, if he came to you and wanted uh, wanted you to help him, what what would be the first thing you worked on with? Him? The Just first thing is yeah, the, the stats. Yeah, the first the first thing I would work on, without a doubt, um, 
is going to be getting it closer to the hole from 50 yards, 75 yards. See, 75 to 100 yards, he's 142nd. We could work on putting until our nose bleeds. <laughs> but if we, doesn't, if we don't get close to, closer to the hole from, 100, from 75 to 100 yards, what difference does it make? You can't, you can't totally put your way to success. You've got to get closer so that you have a chance to make more, and then you've got to make more. That's but, what Hogan used to say, right? So you want to be a yeah. better putter, get it closer. Exactly. I mean, look at this. Approaches from 120 to 150 yards is 179th. Um, that's, that's where I would go big time. Look at this. Left rough tendency, 176. So he's hitting it left once in a while. Uh, 173rd, proximity to hole from the sand. There you go. Now that's where I could help him big time because all of Cuba is nothing but one big pile of sand. <laughs> <laughs> Back nine scoring average, 175th. Something's going on in his head. Why? Why on the back nine? Which is what happened to him on this tournament. On the back nine, he had, what, three bog five bogeys, four bogeys, something like that, three, shot 39. Look at my back, nine, back nine scoring area. That's amazing. Yeah, and and that's one, you know, from what I hear, what I could see around there, boy, he's a great guy. He's got a nice family, everything. Good guy. Real good guy. Club head speed, 146th. Wow, at 110 miles an hour. Mod on. Distance to apex, carry distance, distance efficiency. All right, so um, that's where I would head. No doubt in my mind. Look at that. When he gets hot, he gets hot. He's got 62 is the fifth lowest round of the year. When you're hot, you're hot. And when you're not, you're not. But scrambling from the rough, 94th, no. Rough proximity, 146. I... Proximity to the hole, 170th. We've got to get closer to the hole. We've got to get closer to the hole. And you've got to get closer to the hole from 75 to 100 yards for starters. Here from 50 to 75, he seemed to do a little better, but that's, that's where I think I would go. Look, 50 to 125 yards, 164th. And I think, you know, he has a lot of movement in his swing swing, but, you know, you can get away with that if you're timing it. But when you got, I mean, let's go back and look at that one more time, and I would say this would concern me. See that here? Watch his chest. It's going upward as he's coming down. See? Now, yeah, there's a little bit of uphill movement there, but I wouldn't do it that way. I'd say, well, his, look, his shoulders are set pretty much like the ground is. That, that looks good. It's just, it's, it's, it's more of a mental thing. It's a, it's a mental thought process of just getting yourself to stay real quiet and just work in the club face. See? There's a little bit of trying to lift that ball up. Let the club face do it. Open the right. face a little more if you have to. But um, we'll try and get this to Johnson Wagner. He might say, you know what, Lopez, you're so full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> or he might say, hey, great idea, thanks. You know, and I don't, you know, he didn't owe me nothing for it. I don't I'd like to see him do well. Seems like a real good guy. He might get a shout out if he wins a tournament. Well, and if you do, you do. You know, I don't. I don't like to blame. You know, a lot of these guys, the way they become well known as teachers, they go on the tour and they hang out. Chico used to do that all the time, and every time it's a tour event, he's on the driving range, going back and forth, back and forth, and you wait for some poor sucker to <laughs> to have the worst day of his life, and then they're desperate. You know, they're all a bunch of head cases anyway, and then oh, what do you got? What do you got? You know, that's why I say I'd leave his golf swing alone. You're not going to change that that easy. Leave it alone. It's not that bad. I think, you know, some of the little stuff around the green is where he can really do some work. I mean, um, his golf swing, if he starts messing with that, you can go downhill in a hurry. You know, he's one yeah, of we're, I mean, we were, talking, we were talking the other day about, you know, Miller Barber died. I don't know if you ever found his, his swing, but, man, what, a, what an unusual swing. And he, he stayed on senior Him? For, How about Gabe Brewer? Yeah. Let me see if we can get us back to where we were. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> so let's let's open up the uh the the attendee group here and let's see if they have any questions. Let me click the questions thing. 
There you go. Hold on. Let me see. Let's read some of the questions. And if you want to ask a question, just uh, there's a little thing there where you can. Uh, let me see here. Something about Mike Knoll doesn't know if we're talking. Well, Mike, I hope we're talking because we're talking. <laughs> uh, Wagner, what happened? Tiger gave some of <laughs> Everybody's still dealing with the chicken. <laughs> Everybody's still dealing with the chicken. Let's see if anybody else has. Let's see if I can find uh, attendees. There we go. Anybody got their hand raised and might have a question about what's going on here? About uh, Johnson Wagner swing, or any Where's comments that? about? Hold on, I see. I can see Dennis. Or... Dennis. Yeah, hey, Bob. Hey, buddy. What's up? Now, did you see how he swings from the inside? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Have you seen his practice swing? No. Oh, he cuts. He cuts across. He goes inside and just slam, take the club to the left on his practice swing. And then, and then he does something different. His, they say his coach has got him doing, cutting it inside like that. To uh, well, who's his coach? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Well, let's maybe find out. Can, maybe let's you can out. email him. Oh, well, about I'm gonna email him. I don't give a crap about him. Let me see. It was. Let's see. <laughs> hey, you idiot. What are you doing to this guy? <laughs> Coach for Johnson Wagner. Let's see. Can you spell Coach, you dumb Cuban? Let's see here. Johnson Wagner. Fitness coach fills in as caddy for that's a fitness coach. I don't want his fitness coach. Okay, hold it. Here's some. There you go. Wait a minute. Here. Here you go. Johnson Wagner slump. Nothing to worry about. Says coach. Okay. Who is this coach? James O'Neill. Who is it? Looks like James O'Neill. Yeah. Yeah, I think he uh, missed like the last six cuts. But something's missing from Wagner's game. A big paycheck in 2000. Oh, this is old. He might not even be sealing this game. Bobby anymore. Hines. Bobby Hines. Who's he? I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. He might be a great guy. I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't pay attention to teaching too many tour players or anything because, you know, one day you're, you're, you're the greatest, the next day you're a dog. They're playing great. They're bragging about how great you are. You play bad, and all of a sudden you're a bum. Um, who knows? But this seems like a good kid. I mean, he might be telling I me. Mean, they might not be working on that specific thing or just didn't happen to notice it. I mean, that happens. I look lots of times at somebody swing, and I don't notice the one key issue. That afterwards, by the 14th time you see the swing, you go, holy crap, why didn't I see that before? I mean, that happens. Um, I'm sure the guy's a heck of a teacher. Now, let's see. Oh. Dennis, did you have something else to say about him or what? Yeah, he just got an unusual practice swing. I mean, it's a full-speed practice swing, but the way he carries the club through, is, but he doesn't do it when he's hitting the ball. Well, let's see if we can find it. Here we go. Johnson. Practice swing. Uh, I don't see anything that says this is stuff I looked at today, and I didn't see any practice swing on that. Yeah, I was just looking at the tournament, and he did it every time before he, uh, he used the driver. Well, let's see. Well, this one's a year ago. What's this? This is in slow motion. That can't be him, because look at how well his hips turned right there. But it is. So you look at that. This hold on, hold on. You look at this position right here. Keep going here. 
Okay, hold it. You look at them right there at impact, and then you look at them. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta stop this stupid thing. Now you look at him right here at impact. That's a different golf swing. Stop this thing, will you? See, that's a different golf swing right there. Look at that's a different impact position. Right there. I, I can't stand it anymore. This thing's giving me. What the heck is this? The thing's still going? <laughs> I don't know if you can hear from your side, but I'm getting a little birdie thing or something here. <laughs> All right. The heck with that. I'm getting it again. <laughs> <laughs> You're what, are you doing? what I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> what well, <we> know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was to, let's, let's get back to uh maybe that was just Dennis. Dennis, are you making a birdie sound? No, uh, no. <laughs> All right, anybody else got a question? Let's see. I think Bill Wagner had one. Bill Wagner. Can't hear him. Where is uh we got to say hello to Tony before we go. Hey, Tony. Did I, uh, yeah, no, I haven't got any questions, but dude, yeah, he did choke, didn't he? Well, I don't know if, 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 if it's, yeah, we call it choking sometimes, but, you know, maybe um, it's so difficult. It's so, oh, let me say it, it'll go reverse. It's so easy to have something negative enter in your head real quick you know you just all of a sudden just lose a little bit of the control of your of your uh your rhythm and and you get a little concerned and the concern turns into holy crap you know let me stop the bleeding somebody else throws a couple of birdies on the board i mean it's not hard to have it happen to you i'm telling you it's not you hard he was counting the dollars? No, no. I don't think he cares about that at this point. He's been playing there for a while. He's won golf tournaments before. I don't think he gets a crap out the dollars. I just think uh, it's a shame he's not here. We can't talk to him. But, I mean, um, I just know from experience that it just it's not hard to all of a sudden, you know, you're rolling real good. You've got to somehow put blinders on your on your eyes and keep trying to make birdies. And then sometimes your swing just lets you down. I mean, you you – you want to do it, but you just can't. And he's got a swing that's a little bit of a higher risk golf swing because of that back swing he has. You know, it, it, if he gets off by just a little bit, like Jim said, he looks like a John Daly starter kit. Uh, it doesn't really, but, you know, there's risk there in that swing. And, and if you lose it, you start hitting it off the fairway, the game gets a lot harder. Yeah, I guess you've got to keep it going for four rounds, too, not just three. I'm telling you, it's not that easy. That's why uh, Chick Harbert used to tell me what's great about Nicholas is he can play 18 holes. Most of us play 16 holes. You know, you have two brain farts, and here you start having a brain fart on the back nine on the last day. Um, and let me tell you, it's hard to turn that faucet off. <laughs> ask ask, ask uh, the shark. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is his name there? Um, the heck's his name? Norman. Greg Norman. Greg Norman. Greg Norman, yeah. I'm telling you, I'm getting dementia. <laughs> but you, if, don't you think he would have turned it off in the Masters if he could have? Yeah. I mean, that monkey, gets, <laughs> that monkey gets on your shoulder, man. He's hard to get off, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. Can't, you can't call time out like in other sports. <laughs> You know, you almost need to, you know, that's part, everybody talks about the golf swing, the golf swing, the golf swing, the golf swing. But, you know, um, a big part of, of doing well at this game is how you manage yourself and how you manage your thoughts and how do you manage your, your tempo and your rhythm and how you manage staying focused and uh, shutting everything off. And that's where uh, Bill Wagner, if you're listening, which I'm sure you are, um, 
you know, when we played that day and you said, geez, Lopez, for somebody who yaks all the time, I get on the golf course and I don't say a word. It's because another light switch goes on, you know, and you, you just, you either have to play lights out or total lights on. Um, did he play lights out when he shot 62? And as soon as they turned the lights on, the roaches ran. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's an intangible. It's hard to put your finger on it. It's um, like how many guys are always leading the first day of the Masters, and you think, oh, they're going to win, it, and they just collapse. Yeah, you know, I think in a lot of ways, you know, we ask, what would you do with this guy if I was coaching him? I think I'd be doing more the short game stuff, and I'd be working on mental, 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 mental. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Absolutely. You know, yeah, you know they can play. I mean, anybody can shoot 62, can flat out play. The swing is there. It's, the, it's what's between his ears, I think. Well, is, is Tiger not doing as well as he did when he first started now because of his swing? Or is it because he lost a mental edge and he can't quite get it back? He's trying so hard to get it back, but he can't quite get that mental edge you know, some guys, then they start messing with their swing real bad, and then they really, you know, head on a highway down to nowhere. Then they really get screwed up. So I think it's more mental coaching. That's right, Todd. You know, we get, we get, we get, uh, get Bud Foster and, uh, and Beamer, and let's put them in a room with them. We'll say, come on, we get them fired up, put on a helmet, some shoulder pads, and go play in a tournament. Heck, <laughs> <laughs> you're 6'3", 230 pounds. Guy's doing better than you. Beat the crap out of him. <laughs> <laughs> Trip him when he walks up to the tee on the next hole. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's what Hogan said. The three ways to beat somebody is you outwork them, you outthink them, and you intimidate them. Well, what about uh, Ray Floyd? I saw a little interview with him where he said he'd give him the stare. Yeah. Give you the Ray Floyd stare. <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, the way I did it was... Uh, I had a Cuban switchblade in my pocket. I pop <laughs> pull that puppy on, press the button. They get real scared. I'm only kidding. <laughs> hey, Bobby, right. it was good to see. What was that, Tony? Yeah, it was good to see that Bowditch appears to have conquered his demons because he must have had real mental problems of being in contention to win coming down the, down the last nine and uh, given what he's had over the last six or seven years. Yeah, so, I mean, these guys have their day, and then they have days when they just can't do it, you know. That's the beauty of the game. You want the same idiot winning every week? Drive you crazy. You know, so. Well, good to hear your voice, Tony, like always, buddy. All right, gang. Well, Jim, I would say let's call it a night if we don't have any other questions. No other questions tonight? Let, let's go have dinner. And... Um, I enjoyed it, buddy, like always. And I'll see if we can't get this off to Jason Wagner. I did press the recording button. Yeah. Or Johnson Wagner. Why do I call him Jason? Johnson. <laughs> and let's see uh, Let's see if maybe he sends us back a nasty note. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you to criticize, you dumb Cuban? <laughs> Tell that guy Mason to stick his golf course up his behind. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can come out, get him to come out and play. Well, I'd love to, man. That would be that would be uh, uh, great. Just because I said, it seems like he's a really good guy, good family man, and that's what counts more than anything. I mean, you know, golf tournaments are going to come and go and whatever, but um, he, he's a good representative of the Hokies, and and uh, that's that's what counts the most. All right, gang. Hope you enjoyed it. It's Bobby Lopez signing off, and my partner here, Jim Mason, signing off. Thanks, everybody. You got it.